But I always swore I'd never go in the mines mm, because I see my dad and my granddad and in them days, the miners only usually last till they're 50, 55, yeah. you know, big arms, big shoulders, skinny wee legs because they stand a shovel all day. And there's no safety gear they wore in them days, no dust masks. Like you couldn't see your mate on the other side of the box for the coal dust. And you shoveled that every day. It was only for six hours a day. That's they shoveled. enough, though. Yes, yeah. that's, that's right. Well, that come from the health department in them days because you lose so much sweat and you dehydrate and then you hydrate and you go back into it. Yeah. And I used to hate sports day because I had a, a really good friend. He's passed away now, but he used to bring a whistle on a Friday for sports <laughs> day. Yeah. And I used to say, get that whistle. And I got rid of the whistle. <laughs> <laughs> and the next tour, the whole crew had a whistle. And I was in the Just front. Just to piss you off even And they more. all go, sports day, and they all whistle. Welcome to the Beers with a Miner podcast. My name is Mad Mumsy, and I've been driving the huge dump trucks in Australian open cup mines for over 10 years now. I wish I had a dollar for everyone who said to me, how does a little thing like you drive those big trucks? Oh, you must be rich. How do I get a job doing that? My mining friends are asked these questions all the time too. This is what started the Mad Mumsy journey to share stories and tips from living a mining lifestyle and to let others know what it's really like. Tune in each episode as I sit down for a relaxed chat, usually over a few beers, with a fellow miner. Women and blokes with various experience, roles and opinions share their lessons and stories with you. Not everyone is cut out to be a miner, but why not? What does it take to thrive and survive in this industry? Now, let's dig in. Get it? Dig? Mining? Oh, I crack me up. Hello and welcome to episode 63. In this episode, I sit down with Buck. He is a deputy underground here in central Queensland and you first met him in episode 58 when we spoke about earthquakes and how they might affect mining, especially underground mining. At that time, you may remember, he was heading up to the Cape on holidays with his lovely wife. So finally, when he got back, we caught up and I went to his beautiful home on the beach and I actually had with me an ABC radio reporter from Sydney. Catherine contacted me about coming on their podcast, Background Briefing, to share my thoughts on mine safety. And I said, well, I've already done that once with the ABC. You can just listen to that if you want. And she said, no, it's because of that that I thought that we might be able to do a collaboration. So anyway, this was just after the Denmark TV people, so I was kind of freaking out a bit, (laughs) but in a good way. So she flew up here to Mackay here in central Queensland and we met for a cuppa at Moss on Wood and she interviewed me with a big fluffy microphone and everything and I was so excited, so cool, professional. Um, And then we headed down to Buck's place and she came with me and had a bit of a chat to Buck at the start and recorded me setting up for my episode. And then after that we headed to the marina for a chat and a few beers with some fellow miners some of whom I didn't know, so it was in, it was good to meet some new people and talk mining. I will leave a link to the podcast, the particular episode, in the show notes, which can be found at madmumsy.com forward slash beers 63. So in our chat, Buck shares his mining journey with us, and we also talk about his book that you might remember from episode 58, Coal Faces. It's a great book. I love it, and I recommend that you get it for everyone, especially if they're underground people. They'll get so much out of it. Good Christmas present. The links will be in the show notes as well to where to buy it. Um, Also, what are his thoughts on women in mining and so much more? After our chat, he said, come out, come up here, I want to show you something. And it was this big cabinet full of old mining equipment and um, stuff you wear, you know, not the right words, but his mining collection, old hard hats, belt buckles and all sorts of interesting old gadgets and tools and, you know, the monitors and stuff for underground. A lot of it was underground. And one hard hat was 
actually made out of some special hard cardboard. And I said, oh, so basically it's paper mache, right? <laughs> um, it was really good. I videoed that. You can see that in the show notes or on the YouTube channel if you follow me on YouTube, Mad Mumsy with a Z I E. And towards the end of our video, his lovely wife asked me up stairs for a cup of coffee because it was a bit early for a beer and I had to drive so we sat up there on their deck and spoke about how they see dolphins and whales and oh, how cool is that it was beautiful and small world one of my best mates in mining Rusty hello Rusty he and Buck are good mates and his wife so um, they were asking about how he's going as well so you know such a small mining family and a family extended community which I talk about all the time so I'll shut up let you listen to this conversation with me and Buck an underground deputy and all-round nice guy cheers hello and welcome to the podcast Ian or is it Buck Either, either either Buck's fine. Buck's fine. Buck's okay, fine. Buck. Uh, I'm excited that we finally get to chat in person today. Yes. After a phone call just before you were heading off, and yes. we have our wonderful Catherine from the ABC. We do. In Sydney we do. With us, which is different. Last week it was TV. This week it's ABC. Next That's week, right. Is, yeah. Getting so, <laughs> no, no, it's not that. But it is. Uh, it is nice that. A, people know what podcasts are now, and also that uh, people want to know about our mining industry, yes, which is why we're here. Yep. So we'll have a chat, yep, and no I want to hear all about your story. Right. Um, you ready to dig in? Get okay, it? Yeah. Get it? Do you get it? Dig, dig. Oh, yeah, mining. Do. Yeah, very clever. <laughs> I crack me up. Pretty clever. So the most important question yes. I always start off with is, this podcast is called the Beers with a Miner podcast. I like to start these happy hour episodes with my guests sharing their favourite beverage and their best place to enjoy it. It might be beer, wine, spirit, or perhaps even a cup of tea. What is yours, Buck? Um, my beer is Great Northern, uh, original, really like that. My best place to spend it is um, probably with my wife around about four o'clock. We have a couple of beers. And um, I really enjoy that, and with my family, of course. I like to enjoy a few beers with my family, or watching footy, or drag racing, or whatever. Did you watch Bathurst on the weekend? Oh, I did. Oh, so did I. The whole, I gave myself the whole day off. Oh, yeah, it I didn't watch awesome. the whole lot of it, but yeah. it was magnificent. <laughs> yeah, yes. good race. Very good. Are you Ford or a Holden man? Uh, I'm a Holden man. Yes, that's all right. Uh, Otherwise, I'd have to leave. But it was, it, <laughs> I was happy it was two Kiwis that won. Oh, yeah, because you're a First Kiwi. First and second, I certainly are. That's right, which we will <laughs> talk a lot right about. Right yeah. that's fine. Yep. So let's start with that. Let's start with your mining journey. Right. First of all, how did you get into mining and how long ago was it? Uh, I started mining in 1973 at the Strongman Mine, which is on the, in uh, New Zealand and the West Coast. Um, I, um, my uncle was in mines, my dad... I've got about six generations of miners coming out from Scotland. Wow. And, uh, and we, uh, I, I, I done an apprenticeship first. I started an apprenticeship. Then I went, ended up going into the mines. Uh, wow. And I got my deputy's ticket in 1983. 1983, I got my deputy's ticket. And I, um, to use it in them days, you had to sort of go move away to sort of get a job because I was only quite young. And so I ended up going up to Huntley after 11 years at Strongman. Oh, wow. And uh, we went up to Huntley, and I used my deputy stick up there, took my family up there, which is mm -hmm. a big move for us, because we've always lived on the coast. Yeah. And anyway, I was up there for five years, and um, and then the mine was sort of slowing slowing down, the industry and that, and things went ahead in the way I like to do it. But uh, I went up there initially to use my ticket and to get mechanised mining experience because when I was at Strongman Mine we were mainly hydro mining uh, shovel uh, and scraper loader and um, it, was, it, was a, it was hard work but it was really good good people there and good mentors to help you along the way and that's what I enjoyed you know and 
when I went up north, I, um, I had a couple of crews up there, Maori boys. That was, that was good, really good experience. Met a lot of good people up there. But we were there for five years, and then we moved across to Australia. Uh, we flew across, and um, we left at nine degrees and arrived at about 43 degrees, so it was a bit of a shock for the kids. <laughs> Why did you decide to come to Australia? Well, if I went back to Greymouth... I would lose that mechanised mining experience because we never had any uh, mechanised mining in Crimea. So I decided to uh, come to Australia and have a look. So we did, and we went, ended up going to Blackwater. Um, and the people there were fantastic. I got quite sick there, actually. I got Ross River Fever. Oh. I got one in Western Australia. Uh, and then we, um, I got Ross River Fever, and then they had to uh, elephant me to Rockhampton, intensive care for a couple of days and we just arrived we didn't know anyone but the mine was absolutely amazing South Blackwater Mines they um, took my wife in they put her up in the motel at the hospital beside the hospital and looked after us and they didn't know me from a bar of soap so that sort of made me stay and the and the hospitality I got in Blackwater at the hospital I thought well you know I can't leave now mm. we were quite homesick at the time yeah. Uh, but I said, no, we'll give it a go. So we did, and we, then we moved to Thierry. We were there for six years, and I loved it there. Um, it was good for the kids growing up in Thierry. It was only a young town then. And uh, I sunk the main shaft for Oakey Creek, number one. And um, it was an amazing job. And uh, then we moved to North Canella uh, in 93. And so we moved there, and I... I um, Finished off the drifts there. I'm a shot fire, so we finished the drifts off, and then I went into a production crew, and then onto a longwall crew. And I was there till uh, '99, and then I left there and went to Newlands. Uh, it's out at Glendon. That's the old Southern Pit. Magnificent, amazing pit. Uh, met a lot of good people there. Uh, the deputies actually sort of run the mine more or less. Mm-hmm. It was, it was the way it was set up was great. And I've sort of I've took a lot of that on my journey with me, the, the way they'd done things there. It was amazing. Um, then I, um, I went back to... They wanted me to go back to North Cunella as an um, under-manager. So reluctantly I did, and I'd done it, I'd done it for a year, but that, that was part of the deal. And some of the guys, when they closed the Southern, I took 15 people with me to give them jobs. So I'd done it for a year, and then after that year, um, I had enough of that, sitting in a, up the surface and all the mm. stuff that goes on, you know. I didn't, I didn't really like it, didn't feel comfortable. Every so day you were was just... A, so I, you were a sunshine miner? Well, I was. I was sitting up top, and all you're doing is putting bushfires out. Mm. You know, I like to be at the front, where you, and I couldn't... You know, it's hard to relate to people when you're not down there with them. Yeah. So I found that quite hard, and um, so I left, and then uh, a friend of mine, me and Bryson Chin, we went out and um, went out on our own. And I went out, worked at Bandura, then went to Grass Tree, and then I ended up going over to Cabra Downs. I was there for about four or five years. I was on their long wall, and I was um, doing a contract out by as well. Then um, we went back to... Um, uh, grass tree got offered a big a big contract there of actually shooting a dike out of a panel which was operating so it was, it was pretty clever for me I thought that was really really good to get into you know yeah. so we done that and it worked and they were happy with that mm-hmm. so it worked pretty good then I um, after that I went to Cook Colliery for a wee while I enjoyed working with the blokes and only a ten and a half hour shift so oh, that was good for right, a change yeah. but the drive was a killer so where, where's there. that? At, at Blackwater. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so it was a long drive out there, a long drive back, and I found myself falling asleep sometimes, so mm. I sort of stopped that. And then um, I ended up going to um, uh, Broad Meadows, offered me a permanent job in 2015, I think it was. Yeah. So I thought, well, you know, permanent job, and I'll retire here, and so I did. They've been very good to me. They've been excellent, actually. You know, they, they let me do... They let me. They ask me questions, what I think about me men, and, and they don't 
push me with my men. You know, I sort of run the run run my part, and they're all happy with that because I get our jobs all done. Mm. And um, yeah, so and then um, they brought copies of my book, so I'm really pleased about that. So the young fellows can actually read it and go through and see what other people have been through. It's not just going down. And there is a career in mining. And I think it's a it's a good career, you know. But you know you've got to do it properly. And you, you can go either ways. You can go either be a miner, and there's nothing wrong with being a miner, a good miner. Go on to be a deputy or under manager, or move over to be a tradesman. Mm. Yeah, you, know, you can do that. The options there to do that if you're good. But um, you know, some some guys just go on there and think, all I'm going to do is bolt for the rest of my life. You know, they don't have to do that. You know, there's other options they can do. Just yeah. let the rubbish truck go past. That is the rubbish truck. Yeah, <laughs> it's Wednesday. <laughs> I have trains at my house, so sometimes oh. when I'm interviewing, I'll hang on a minute. This is a train. I'll have this a is a three yeah. o'clocker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's yeah. it. Yeah, um, that is a really good tip for people who are looking to get into the industry is once you're in, that doesn't mean that's what you have to do forever. Once you're in, you can open your eyes and see what else is out there. Oh, look, you can do all kinds of stuff. Mm. He never thought I'd do a book. If it wasn't for my friend in New Zealand, he he works for a a newspaper, and my friend actually owns a newspaper. He um, he said, and I told him some of the wee things, and he said, we should write a book Mm. on mining. And I've always wanted to do that. Because the old fellas that led me in the 70s and the, and the 80s, they're, they're all gone now, but their legacy will continue on, with me anyway. Mm. And if I put it down in writing, uh, it's a good thing to hand on. You know, someone will read it one day. And I know there's a lot of people, just not in Queensland, like in New South Wales, but I haven't sort of got into New South Wales where to get me books down to, you know. Mm. And I'm sure if one of them read it, it would be fantastic, you know. So I might try and send one down to a museum or maybe... Something like that, or the Mines Rescue in New South Wales. Yeah. Or, yeah. Well, the uh, ABC to just spoke yes. of you, so yes. that might be a way. That and we haven't mentioned way. the book. People, no. my listeners are going, book, what blue book? Yeah, but actually, I know. I will, have in, I will have said it in the intro. Yes, But yes. the book is called Coal Faces, and oh. the, I love it because it's got so many pictures in it. Oh, yes. Oh, uh, and it uh, just takes That took so long. Back. It took us three years and... Yeah. Probably a year and a half of that was getting photos because in the old days they never took photos mm. because they only had box brownies. You get one film a year or something. So I had to take, like, um, people's wedding photos, take the husband, take his head off and then put it on to that era, you know, to get the pictures done, you know. Yeah, and I got a lot from the Greymouth Star, which was fantastic because they've written a few books right, over yeah. there. So, And you've had feedback about the book? Everyone said that a lot of people said they can't put it down. Well, it's been great. You know, especially it's easier for people who know me or know where we come from and what we went through in the old days. It's easy. And I'm sure for New South Wales, a lot of them old fellas will know. And Ipswich and we're in those places. Um, yeah, I've had a lot of good feedback about it. It's not just about minds. It's the, it's the humour in minds and the people look after you and um, some of the stories and some of the stories of my journey when I was in... I, I had a really bad motorbike accident. I was in traction for a year, and and some of the stuff in that was, and everything in that book is true blue. Mm. Everything is just true, and uh, it's funny. I read it myself. I think, God, how have I lasted this long? Well, that was going to be one of my questions. You, you just said it was here and there. And I there know. And there. I know. So, I know, but mm. you're nearly at the end of your mining journey. Yeah, I'm 65 last week. So, yeah. happy birthday. Thank you. So next year I'll um, retire, probably March, April. Mm-hmm. And um, so, and then I'll go into my next stage, which is restoration of um, old old gear, petrol pumps. Uh, I might do another car or a truck. Yeah. Um, it's a love of mine, so I just really enjoy doing that and get a lot of feedback. But you know, as you get older, you can't move as quick as you could. So, um, yeah, it's my love for cars and... I've handed that on to my son, which is a great thing, you know. Yeah. I'm really proud of that, yeah. yeah. And now you have more time to do it. Which exactly. Is, and you'll be home all the time. How's your wife going to handle that? Oh, uh, <laughs> good. Well, we get on. Like, Ellen's going to carry on working. She works at Pathology, so she only works three days a week. Yeah. And she loves her job, so I'm not about to say, you know. But we will plan more for trips. We're planning another trip in our caravan mm-hmm. next year. And um, um, 
we'll, we'll go right down south. And I'm really looking forward to that because I didn't know how we'd go, like cooped up in a wee caravan after both of us working flat out all yeah. the time. But it took us a couple of days, but now we just love it. Put on a wee bit of beef and um, just relaxing and yeah. enjoying life and, and seeing stuff. It's not all about just seeing work and, yeah. you know, it's, it's good ethics to get out and have a go. But, you know, when, when people retire and get the chance, you know, I reckon they should do it. It's fantastic. Yeah. It's a beautiful country. Oh. Absolutely. And the people in We had so many good friends. It's great. Mm. Great. Did you have people all around to go visit or did you no, just not really. not do no, that? No, we just stayed at caravan parks and we free camped and met people and, mm. you know, just found out there's a lot of people just live in their caravan. Yeah. Full time, you know. Yeah. Um, I don't think I could do that, but uh, it's fantastic, you know. Well, you've certainly got a lovely home base here. Oh, yes, it's taken me a long time to do this, you know. Like, it's, yeah, it's a long time to sort of get to the stage, and now we're finding it's probably a bit big, but mm. the place it's at is it's really, really good, you know. Yeah. I was going to ask you that when you moved all those times, yes. did family come with you? Did you stay in the small mining towns or were you here and all, you always drove off? No, 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 no. We, we travelled. The first mining town was Blackwater. Yep. We were there and then we were Thierry for five years. Uh, my daughter was 16. We left there, Holly, my oldest daughter. I didn't want her to marry a miner. Why she, not? She Why ended, not? Uh, well, <laughs> People say marry a rich miner, you'll be laughing. Yeah, I know, <laughs> yeah, but right. I don't know. Some of the attitudes are a bit... I know. You know. So anyway, I wanted to give her a chance at school, so we moved in here. She met a, a young fella, and she's uh, Blair. She's still with him today. They're married with three kids, and mm. he's a coal miner. Oh, so, so she married <laughs> a bloody miner after all. And then my other daughter married a miner. And, an, <laughs> and then, so it's it's good. My son, he, he's a um, he's a miner, a deputy. So. And your son is a miner. Yeah. Yes, he is a miner, yes. But I didn't let him go on the mine straight away. Mm. I uh, had him fencing on a property out west uh, for a couple of years yep. to work uh, to, to learn some work ethics, and it was and it's, it's worked a treat. Mm. Yeah, he knows what hard work is, and um, and he's not afraid of it. And He'd I think, appreciate the money more. Too. And I think, yeah, he does. He he does, but he he enjoyed it out there so much, him and his friend. And I think it's a great thing to do. Like it's sad seeing young kids just put straight into the minds by their parents. You can have this son, you know. But you really got to earn it, mm. and all they know is mining. But if they start elsewhere and have to actually do the hard work and stay back and miss out on lunches and things like that, that's what you do for your job yeah. and your boss. It's good ethics, I think. Yeah, I'm a big thing in that, you know. When you started mining, Buck, did you have a plan just to do it for a while and then get out, or were you, you well, always thinking, I'll do this forever? I always swore I'd never go on the mines. Mm, because I see my dad and my granddad, and in them days, the the miners only usually last till they're 50, 55. Yeah. You know, big arms, big shoulders, skinny wee legs, because they stand and shovel all day. Mm. And th- uh, there's no safety gear they wore in them days, no dust masks. Like you couldn't see your mate on the other side of the box for the coal dust. And you shoveled that every day. It was only for six hours a day. That's enough, though. Yes, yeah. that's, that's right. Well, legally, uh, and the, uh, they come from the health department in them days mm. because you lose so much sweat and you, and you dehydrate and then you hydrate and you go back into it. And in them days, it was all you get paid for what you've done. It was contract. You don't get paid a daily rate. I think you did get paid a daily rate of about a dollar fifty. So like and, a base rate. Yes, base yeah. rate, and the rest was contract. So you made your money how much you fill. And that's how you made your money. So it was hard work. And if you and if you were when I first started floating, floating was when you go if one of the miners are off, you go and replace him with his mate. You go there for a day or a week if he's sick or he's on holiday. And if you're no good, that gets back to the boss. You don't get another chance. If you can't shovel or have a go, you don't have to be a big shoveler or a big tough bugger. As long as you have a go, you'll learn the trade. You know. Yeah. And by shovel, you mean literally on a shovel? Banjo shovel on the front of that bar there. That's oh, right. Yeah. Yes. I'll share lots of pictures in the show notes because <laughs> apparently we have... What do we have to look at? A mining I've room. got a mining collection of old um, lamps and hats. And oh, definitely. Well, do a little video of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. fine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Good yeah. Go. Awesome. Um, yeah, so it was, um, it was really hard work. But as I said, they teach you and um, 
and you learn whether you're worthy or not to go on the coal. And the guys that aren't, you know, they'll stay trucking or go shiftmen or whatever yeah, out by. So you said you said you would never do it. Oh, yes, um, sorry. You, no, that's I all did. right. Um, I did. And now I know why. Yeah. <laughs> so well, what happened? And, yeah. um, well, in 1970, my mum moved from Christchurch to Greymouth back home because our dad left years before. Anyway, um, then I, I started, uh, as an, as an, I got an apprenticeship with Dave's panel building. I was there for two years and I never had any money. Like, I was only on you know, $16 a week. And all my friends would be out and that. And anyway, I decided, bugger it. So I went in the bush. I went in the bush for about a year, clear fouling, cutting native timber down. It was hard work, but it was great. I loved it. So I'd done that for a year, and then I got the opportunity from my uncle uh, to get a job in the mine. And I thought, oh, bugger it, I will. So I did. And um, it's sort of in your blood. You know, when you mm. walk underground, even for the first time, uh, I walked in there, and my dad worked at the same mine, my granddad, my uncles, cousins. And I walked in there, and I thought, oh, this is great, you know. So, and um, yeah, so I, I was there ever since. And my uncle again taught me, and a guy called John Sturgeon, he's a great mentor, he's on the front of the book. And he's a great mentor of mine. He told me to go and do my deputy's ticket. Yep. And I said, don't be so silly. I'm like, go and do my deputy's ticket. He said, yep, you will. Me and another guy called Peter O'Neill. Peter, unfortunately, got killed at Pike River. Yeah. He was a deputy. Uh, that, was, that was a big... Yeah, big oh, that, was, that, was, that was just... Don't get me going on. I, I tell you, if I seen that whittle now, even now, I don't know the man. I've never met him, but I'd just knock him out what he's done mm. to that, uh, uh, the coast, you know. But anyway, I, um, yeah, John Sturgeon, he's just a great man. He, um, he took me and Peter O'Neill and put us in a caravan because we used to play football, of course. Uh, so it was on a Wednesday and a Friday night we'd go in the caravan yep. because on Tuesdays and Thursdays we were football training. Rugby league? Rugby league, Rugby league of course, league. yep. It was a big thing back home. It was a big thing. You had to do it, you know. Uh, and anyway... Just, you uh, weren't a Kiwi if you didn't. No, no <laughs> exactly right. Um, but he uh, he was just amazing, amazing man. Encouraged me and we went to night school and we got our tickets. So, and, um, yeah, but I, um, I, always, I never stand over people, but I always, always make sure that they know what they're doing, you know, and that's, that's something I've learned. From mm-hmm. other people, from other deputies, that have taught me, you know, um, over the years. So it's, um, and I've been in the mines ever since. And once you get in there, I think it's hard to get out sometimes. But so sort of mine was, I was doing one job, and then I'd go to another, and then I'd do go another direction. Like mm. I took little a, fresh stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Like I took hydro mining to um, up to um, Huntley West mine. It blew up a few years ago, actually. They had an area in a seam that they couldn't get with machines. So I set up a wee hydro mine, you know. So what is hydro mining? Hydro mining is when you bore and fire. When it's really undulating, it might be on a, a grade of one and four, one and six, mm-hmm. and you've got to try and get that seam out. You can't get it with machinery because it's too steep. Yep. So we'll bore and fire it and then wash it. Hose it down these wee flumes into a catchment area and then we'll put it on the belt. It'll get put on with an AFC conveyor or something onto the belt and it goes straight out. So you, as soon as you, you wash it from their face, it's gone. It's gone straight to the service. Mm. So you haven't got shuttle cars and nothing like that. So it's... Uh, and I thought that was pretty good, you know. I was really pleased with that. Then I came over here and, um, yeah, no, it's been an amazing trip. Amazing. I've met a lot of good people. I've learned a lot of stuff and, um, you know, it's just been amazing. What do you think is the best way for people these days to get into mining? A lot of the people who connect with me yes. are desperate to get in the mines. Yes. And that's what my first thing I say is, well, listen to the podcast first and yes. see if it's really what you want to do because I get people's stories and well, they're not all right. good. No, there are a lot of people no, that no, are very no, no. successful. Yes, it, yes. I love it. But, yes, there is. Mm. But, you know, you've got to look past, I know it's good money, but... Look past the money and just see what you want to do in mining, you know. If you want to sit there and pick up your, you know, $1,800 a week, whatever they get through putting bolts up all your life, you know, that's, that's as far as you'll go, you know. 
But, um, you know, as I said before, mining's a career. You can go a lot of different paths, and you can do that if you're clever enough. Mm. And if you want to do it, you've got to want to do it, you know, not someone tell you to do it, you know. But to get into mining now is talk to other people, you know, talk to young fellas and say, and what I've done, I had a list. Wherever I go, I have a list of... Um, of uh, fours and against. Fours are, uh, are money, obviously. Yep. The money's a good thing. It's always on the four fours list, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Probably the uh, the long hours. It's hard. It's hard for a lot of young fellas to get out of bed. Like, in, you know, early hours. I get up at three, quarter past three every day uh, when I'm at work. Yeah. And I don't get, I don't get to bed till eight o'clock at night. Mm. So, but I'm getting towards the end of my career, but they're just starting. Yeah. So they've got to think about that. Um... Yeah, and it's it's hard work. It's hot, especially over here. It's very hot. But, you know, I find it very rewarding. There's a lot of good people out there. Mm. There's a lot of people in positions that shouldn't be in positions too. Um, and But you can use certainly if you've got any, um, any clues, you'll pick that up pretty quick and you'll find someone that you you trust and, and you'll deal with them, you know. Mm. But, yeah, like it's, it's, a, it's a good career. I, I, I really enjoy it. You know, but I'm getting the end of my time now, so I'm getting pretty tired, really. Do you think you'll be sad when you do actually walk yeah, out of that hole yeah, for I the think, last time? Yeah, so it will be sad. But, um, you know, a worker trying to talk me into coming back and doing some time. Oh. And whether I do that or not, I don't know. But it'll <laughs> yeah. be sad for the blokes. And, uh, you know, and I'm, I'm sort of an emotional bugger too, you know. So standing up in front of me guys for the last day is going to be pretty hard. Yeah. yeah. Starting to tear up a little bit there already, just thinking oh, about that. Yeah. Do they have any underground traditions for your last day? Oh, look, oh. we've had a few at different mines, like stone dust and water. And like what? Yeah, it's like stone dust. They put water on you first and they cover you in stone dust. And <gasps> we've had that before, but it's sort of all shunned out now through the things that oh, are yeah, not pretty not correct. Pretty, yeah, yeah. But you usually get a uh, bit of water. One of the funniest ones that... Um, at our, at our work, was one of the guys was leaving, so, and we got a big truck wash there. And we don't use it because our underground vehicles are. And this guy, he took, he, he took the whole crew, backed them into the truck wash. And so the whole crew was wet, not just the guy <laughs> leaving. So I thought that was pretty funny. That's funny. You know, yeah. And, yeah. and it was, everyone took it as a joke, of course, you know. And it's good, you know. But, um, yeah, you know, it'll, it'll be really sad, but I'm happy to go on. I hope I've pass things on to other younger fellas, you know, and I'm sure I have in my career, you know. I've still got a lot of friends in New Zealand that um, that we, they started off in other jobs and I've taken them in and, and they actually love it. You know, the majority of them are going to be deputies. Like, uh, I think there's about four guys from Newlands that were on my long wall face, four of them are deputies now, some under managers. Yeah. So they've, you know, they've taken it by the horns and, you know, good boys, good hard, hard workers and yeah, Makes you, it rewarding for you. It does. Mm. It, 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 it does. And they were good workers, you know, and they listen most of the time. <laughs> but um, we had our arguments and that, but, uh, you know, but they've actually done something you know, through that hard work, and you know, I think it's a great thing, mm. you know. And don't ever be scared to ask questions. That's my biggest thing. Ask, and if you don't know, ask a question because someone could get hurt if and you if, don't understand what you're doing. And if you've already asked it? And you should feel like you should know the answer and you're still not sure. If you don't get it, stop. Ask again. You might be having a... That's it. Know. Just stop and ask a question again. Yeah. Ask someone else. Ask and someone else. And if you're else, not sure yeah. of that answer, ask again. Mm. Or don't do it. But most Until officials... Do, that's right. Mm. Yeah, no, don't do that thing. You know, just don't do that. If you're not yeah. happy with it, you don't feel right about it, ask a question. On the leaving side of things, traditions, yes. um, through the people that I've met and yes. my family as well, and I've done it once, yes. is tied my steel cap boots onto the fence. And they have ah. boot trees as well. Oh, do they? Yeah. Is this I, an open cap thing? Yeah, it must be. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Um, there's been a few boot trees around. I know my sister's taken lots of photos of right. those. I'll share, I'll share some on the show notes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For That'd this episode, good. which will be madmumsy.com yeah. forward slash beers sixty. Three. Yes. Yeah. So you can see the pictures and the video that we'll take soon right. on, on there and okay. a link to your book as yep. well. That'd be good. Um, but yeah, so I left a mine 
Yes. Because uh, I always just say this one band camp sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, So yeah. I can get away with a bit more and see <laughs> a bloody cranky dozer driver, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, and... I tied my boots up, took the photo and everything next to, and had a huge night that night with yeah, the crew yeah, yeah, got yeah. on it, never yeah, to yeah. return to mining ever again. Yeah, yeah. I, I really like those boots. I went and untied them and oh. took them home. <laughs> They were purple. Yeah, that's good. Oh, were, you know, the yes, breast cancer. I see a lot of the boots are purple ones. Yeah. yeah the girls wear. And that was a long time ago. A few, yeah. Quite a few of the open cup blokes yes. got them as well. Did they? Yeah, because ah. the mine company, because you get your standard issue, or they've yes. a lot less these days. But yeah. Back then you got every year, you got your new stuff. Oh, right, and And, okay. um, yeah, so you could, they'd donate $20 yes. per boot to yes. breast cancer. I think a lot of research. their boys got... Um, Shirts, I think. I yeah. Think blue for it was beyond blue or something. Yeah. And the, cancer, and the pink I was um, the pink was for the uh, cancer breast cancer. Yeah. I think. Which is good. Which is a great yeah, thing. It's good it's to a see great the mining thing. companies. Yeah. Helping yeah. out. No, it is good. Helping Most out. of the guys in the service had them. We didn't have them underground. Mm. But uh, when it, I don't know if we ever got offered them actually. Yeah, we better. I you must know, find they might it. need some pink shirts. I must find <laughs> it. Well, that's all right. We so. can we can call them salmon. Yeah. Oh, you can call them whatever you want. <laughs> we know they're pink. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's yeah. right. Now for a word from our sponsor, Julia Hartman and the Bantax Accounting Group. Julia's my awesome accountant. She's written two books with financial expert Noel Whitaker, and she's got a passion to help us miners make the most out of our hard-earned cash. She's got heaps of tips and make sure that we get every cent we are meant to get and is right on the ball with everything. If you head to bantax.com.au forward slash miners, that's B-A-N-T-A-C-S, you can download a free booklet all just for us miners. And there's also a spreadsheet in there that helps you check off what tools you have for your trade, like your isolation lock, work boots, seven shirts, all of these sorts of things, and you can weigh them up and it'll tell you if you qualify weight-wise to claim your trips out to work. And that's just one of the things that they've got over there. So I strongly urge you to head to bantax.com.au forward slash miners and see what they can do and find your nearest office as we come up to tax time they're really on the ball know what's going on with the tax department and there's heaps of other free information like property investing if you really plan on doing some great things with your money you want to do that right if you want to sell your house can save a lot of money if you find out what to do first rather than in hindsight and julia she'll you know make sure you get it right and if you do it wrong and then go and see her, she'll she'll up you (laughs) in the nicest possible way because she really cares about us and wants us to keep our money and not give it to the tax department. Anyway, head over to bantax.com.au forward slash miners and tell them Mad Mumsy sent you. Speaking of PPE, what do you do with all your old PPE? You must have a truckload after all these years? Oh, the old PP when we mm. leave from one pit to another. Mm. Oh, I, I take most of it with me. Like, you know, especially if you get a good pair of earmuffs or earplugs that yeah. you like. Um, what about yeah. your boots? Your boots? Um, yeah, I usually take them. Well, they're no good to anyone else, really. Yeah. You know, um, if, they're, if they're fairly new, I'll take them, but if not, I'll, I'll toss them. Um, but, uh, yeah, like... like PPE has never been a problem at, at, at the mines I've ever worked at. You just go up and ask and there's no problem. I've um, had a few... The reason I ask this question is because my mum mm-hmm. made pot hangers out of our old hard hats. Oh, put did she? Put in them. Yeah, well, that's I good. I hard hats. I've got right all my on, old good hard on hats. You. Good on you. And she used to plant herbs in our boots. Oh, how good is that? That's, yes. I've seen that, actually. Yeah, so yeah. I've got... A few of my old boots are in yeah. my garden, right. but they're just deteriorate. Like you know, they're yes. going to go back yes. into the earth. Where they, right. <laughs> where are they, they the high top doing... boots? No, we, not the high, high, the high top boots. Yeah. So I can bring you a pair of them. When I retire, I'll bring them to you. Oh wow! And give you a, and, awesome. and give you a hat. 
Oh, lovely. Probably not my last one. I'll give you no, one. No, no, I don't expect. For your mum, oh. yeah, that's good. Oh, thank you. Yeah, we. Um, my partner has the high, high one. Yes, yes. Yeah, he. I went to his farm the other day, and he came out of the bush. Yeah. With a, <laughs> Beer in one hand. Yeah. I'm like, wow, yeah. look at you. Yeah. Yeah. It's good that he wears them out of because lots of snakes where he is. Oh, and yeah, he well, was I building a rock yes. wall. And, yep. Yeah, and that's a good idea. I wear them over the bank when I'm whips them because mm. we eat snakes over there. What about your high vis shirts and stuff? Are they your gardening and fishing shirts? Or no, you just I never don't. wear them at home? I try home? never to wear them at home. I'm like that, right? Because you see people. You see them at shopping centres with them. I know a lot of people that work at mills and that, but these are underground guys, I, mm. I know. Yep. And they wear them on their days off. I mean, what the? Oh, what the <laughs> actual? That's right. Look, I'm with you, Buck, because I got so sick of yes. the colour, whatever the colour is. I we know, were I orange know. and I was excited when we changed and yes. went to yellow. I was That's like, right. woo yeah. new colour. But... Uh, people on my crew, they wear it fishing, they wear it mowing no. the lawn. You've got old T-shirts yes. for that, mate. I've got know? heaps of mine. But I have, yeah. got, I have still got brand new shirts from my, when I had my company, Buchanan Mining. I've still got them. And, um, and my son and, um, and my grandson, mm-hmm. uh, my daughter-in-law, I bought a shirt from his son and he got a wee logo on it, Buchanan Mining, when he was, he was only six months old. So it was a picture of me and Hayden and, and, and Ryland. This wee shirt on. Yeah. So that, that was pretty special. Yeah. Because I still have my company then, see? I love the little kids' high vis. Yeah, yeah. My they look little pretty three year old grandson just yeah, got yeah, yeah. given one from someone's yeah, business. Yeah, how good is that? It's yeah. So cute. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, what are your favourite rosters that you've done over the years? Well, you would have done a few. Yeah, I, I have. Like when we first not started. Not so favourite? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. In New Zealand, it was mainly a lot like. Um, uh, five day, like Monday to Friday, mm-hmm. and then I used to work like a Saturday. I used to do a lot of overtime, all the time, because I knew I wanted to to get ahead. Um, I used to work a Saturday or a Sunday morning for inspection, and uh, and when I came over here, we um, worked the old seven panel roster at Oakey Creek. That was very hard. That's the old uh, open cut roster, which was seven on one off, seven on two off, seven on four off. And that was a hard yeah. roster. You wouldn't Especially know. Especially underground. No, I didn't. Because no. Ellen used to pick me up, my wife picked me up from the mine uh, after the night shift on the last one. And I'd just get in the car, the kids would be on the back, ready to go, and we'd just take off. Yeah. And we'd go to Yapoon, uh, Mackay, Early Beach, wherever. Anywhere. And just chill out. <laughs> yeah. You know, and we needed that, and I'd sleep on the way. And it, it was great. Like, we used to go, all our friends, we had a lot of close friends in Terry. We used to, uh, the girls on the holidays used to go to Bundura Dam. We'd set up all the tents yeah. and have our boat there. And then we'd go to work on night shift, come back, have a couple of beers in the morning, have a sleep, get up, do some swimming with the kids and water skiing, and then we'd go back to work for that night. That worked pretty good, you know. Mm. Yeah, so, um, yeah, but uh, the roster of mine now is not too bad. It's uh, five and four. Do you have a pyjama day in that? No. No, no. that's good. Yes. What are yeah. your thoughts on pyjama day? Oh, it's, it's, it's terrible, you know. I think it's a terrible thing, you know. We used to have a pyjama day. When, I think when I first started we might have had a pyjama day. And that goes from days to nights. And it was just, well, the boys would play up. That's it. They'd play up That's that night. Big excuse so to get really, on the piss and sleep yeah, all the next yeah, day. Yeah, yeah, Run yeah, I know. So, I mean, yeah. But, I mean, with the hours we're doing now, you know, like we've, we've talked to lots of people on sleep, mm-hmm. sleep apnea and how to sleep and how not to, and, and the diets, you know. Um, but, I mean, you know, we still get the same food at the camps. We still, you know. But I, mu- I must admit, I'm in the best room I've ever, ever been in a camp. Wow. Yeah, so it's pretty good. lucky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so You would have been in some dodgy rooms over there. Oh, years. bloody middleman. At the old camp, we used to... If, if the, uh, the people next door in the footy paddock didn't keep you awake, your air conditioner, then it fell out one day. I went to put it on. It fell out of the wall because it was rotten. The whole the wall, air the, conditioner? Yeah, the what? Ro- <laughs> floor was rotten. And, oh, <laughs> God. But anyway, look, that, they were the days. and yeah. And... You, all you wanted to do was sleep. Mm. And I always made a, made a pact that I'd never drink while I was out there 
unless it was, I was staying back a day, it was the last day, or a training day, I'd have a couple of beers, but I never did because it was hard enough trying to get that sleeping. And if you don't, for, you know, for seven days, it was, it was bloody hard. Mm. Mm. Yeah, some people get better. Well, I, and when I ended up, I was on seven and seven roster. Yes, So yes. seven either days or nights, no doubt. Oh, right, day. okay, that's not bad. And I really liked it because it, by the end of the fifth, sixth, seventh night, yeah, yeah, it yeah. might as well be daytime. Like you, yeah, it, the right. routine was yeah, so good yeah, for me. Yes. But other people yes. got worse yes. as it went on. If you don't that's sleep, right. you don't sleep, you don't sleep, that's you right. don't sleep. It just adds yeah, up. Yeah. And by the end of it, they're just shot. But it did used to take a lot to yeah. get over, especially as you get older. That's right. Like, oh, it used to only take me a morning. I'd go home, have a few beers, yeah. still be up, you know, yeah. the next night and finally yeah. go to sleep. But oh, after no. that, I might just pull over yeah. and debut and have a nap. <laughs> well, we've all done that. And, yeah. one, and one of the biggest things about stress you know, there's a lot of stress out there now. People take a lot of stress on. And I don't know whether it's, um, you know, because they've been on on um, tablets or, or whatever, but there is. But the biggest thing I always found when I was much, when I was younger was at North King Yellow, we used to, I used to do a lot of training, mm-hmm. a lot of running or the gym or the uh, pool. And you do that. And music, music is one of the best de-stresses I ever get. But I get in my old car and... I just turn that thing up, windows down, going home. It's the best feeling. Yeah, and that's that's one of the really important thing because I ask a lot of the young fellas at work, I said, you know, you see my arm all stressed out and bloody not sleeping, not doing this. And I said, do you do any exercise or anything, you know? And, and I think that's a big thing, you know. Mm. Get yourself buggered in the morning. Like I should go home, even just before I hop in the bed, I try and do like, you know, 50 sit-ups or something just to get you buggered and just give you that wee tip you over the top and away you go to sleep. Yeah. And that's, that's a, a good tip. I think that's a good thing for young fellas mm. and, and, and girls, you know. It's, um, you know, it just just helps you to get back to sleep, you know, if you're buggered. But if you're wide awake, if you had a bit of a kip that night or something and you get home, you won't sleep. Mm. You know, you'll tross and turn all day till about 1 o'clock and then you've got to be up at 4 you finally get back to and sleep what, and that, then the bloody alarm goes off. And by the end of the week, you're that bloody cranky. So, you know, you've got to try and manage it yourself too. I know all the experts tell you how to manage it, but it doesn't work for everyone, no. you know. And it changes <coughs> too. Just oh, when you think does. you've got this you got night right. shift, you know, then you'll have a day. Why didn't I sleep? Well, that's right. It's What's like, going on? I'm good at this. <laughs> uh, it was like when you had young kids in the old days, cot deaths for a, like, oh, you couldn't give them bananas. Don't give your kids bananas or... Don't give them an egg. You know, make sure they don't feed them a wee egg or something. I mean, bloody hell. You bug it if you do, you bug it if you don't. That's right. Yeah. yeah, it's just a matter of um, what works best for you. I think at so, the yeah, time. yeah. My biggest tip is don't beat yourself up if you're lying there trying to get to no. sleep and you're not sleeping. You go, oh, my God, I'm not oh, asleep. I know. Well, you won't. At least you're laying down. That's Shut right. Shut your eyes. You're, you're having resting. a bit of a rest. That's right, you know, yeah. And then you might... Eventually, just drop. not off. Yeah, I, meditation I turn, apps I like to. I turn the yeah. yeah well, I've never meditated, but I just turn the radio on. <laughs> I had a feeling you'd say that. Yeah. <laughs> not the first one no, on the podcast. No. Say that. I I'm bet you saying. I'm not. I bet you I'm not. Yeah. I think um, Soraya might have been. I really bonded with Soraya when I interviewed her. I'll share a she, link she to that a good in girl. the yeah, show yeah. notes. So you've worked with Soraya. Oh, I did. I did. Mm. Yeah, long dark headed girl. Yes. Gorgeous. Yes. Yes. yes, and she's lovely. A lovely yeah, she's worker. a nice girl. Which, yeah. Well, she was nominated for the Women's Industry Network. She was a oh, finalist. Yeah. And so I was going down for the breakfast down there on International Women's yeah. Day in Brisbane yes. and the real miner had worked with Soraya and she, he said, you've got to make sure you meet up with Raya, you know, and yeah. he had three questions I had to ask her about at yes. the, right at the end, which is quite funny. Yeah. But um, it was so good to talk to... A woman who'd been underground yes. and her views on that and it was just really interesting yeah we got well, she, great well she listens course. see yeah and Soraya I've always known she listens and she doesn't swear much mm. a lot of the girls I did all the swearing in that episode <laughs> but a lot of the girls come in and oh I just you know, and I actually have a shot shot at them they'll come into the crib and the boys will be swearing and and I just say to my, well, my boys that boy you know try not to swear look things will slip but try not to swear around the girls because Aww. they try and fit in. And these yes. young girls, they come in, like the young farmers, they come in 
and the boys would be swearing, so they'll start, and it just doesn't sound right to me. And I just say to them by themselves, Chuck, you know, like, there's no need to try and keep up with those guys. There's no need for that. You don't have to believe yourself like that. You know, just do your job, listen to them and do your job, you know. And a lot of them did listen, you know. But Soraya, she never swore much. She was good. Yeah, you know, and I thought she was very, as a tradesperson, she was, she was quite good at the job because she was in my panel for a oh, while. Oh, right, yeah. I actually she, worked with her. She's done her apprenticeship now? Yes. Yes. I know she was in the last, I haven't seen her for about probably six, eight months now. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, she was nearly finishing year four, I think, mm. when she left and went back upstairs. And, yeah. Yeah, but there's a few girls, you know, there's quite a few trades, trades girls, good. Mm. But some of them just swear too much and... You know, oh. I remember Mum saying when I first started, because mm. she'd been in mining. Your she, mum, was she? Yeah, yeah she yeah. started as a cleaner, same right. age as me, 39 yeah, yeah. I started. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. She started life again as well, yeah. and that's when she started. Started off as a cleaner. She was in hard rock, though. Yes. A cleaner and then a breakfast cook yeah. or in the kitchen oh, and then right, breakfast okay. cook. Yeah. And then she ended up in the lab and then she ended up a laboratory supervisor. And then she retired, and now she's an artist. But I and I interviewed her on my podcast, and she's got some great stories because oh, she's yeah. a real pioneering woman. Yes, yes. she's seventy five now, and yes. she started when she was forty. So, That's right. You know, yeah, um, she would have some good stories. But she uh, said to me two things I'll never forget, and it was, "You don't have to become one of the blokes, no. like with the swearing." Yes, and the other <clears> thing was, you think women gossip. Wait till you hear how oh, much the, the bloody man gossip. Oh. And she's so right. I know, oh. she is. I remember when I was young, I was playing football and I was single at the time. And anyway, every Monday morning, all the old guys would sit me down. What'd you get up to on the weekend? Bro? And I'd go, and I'd just tell them lies. But you had to be careful because a lot of their daughters actually lived. They knew. You, you weren't <laughs> sure, you know, because we live in a small town, you yeah. know. Yeah. And, so, and I'd just tell them, really? And they'd be shaking their head and walking off to work going, oh, you know, and I'd be bullshitting them, you know. But they loved it, you know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And it was just a matter of that. And, you know, I, when you're talking about your mum, I heard a thing on the radio today and it said, it was actually Alan Jones, and he said he come from a farming community and his, he said his mother said to him, it takes more of a man to go by himself in the right direction than to go with the mob in the wrong direction. And I, and I was thinking, I was cleaning my car this morning and I'm thinking, how true is that? Mm. And, if you don't, and if you don't ask, you'll just follow. Mm. You know? And if you're not sure, you don't have to go with the mob. You can have your own say. Otherwise, people like us, no one will read my book. No, no one will listen to us. No one and that's, why we, do these, that's, that's why we do these things, you know? And I think, and that's, that's a great saying, you know? Mm. Yeah. Anyway. I'll write that down yeah. in the show I notes. Think, I'll oh, remember I that just one. Think I like it, that. It yeah. is good. It is mm. good. And it's right. You know, some people will go by themselves, but the majority will follow the mob in the wrong direction. And you find that on crew too. I've been on a few sites where they were talking about changing rosters mm. and they had a vote and, yes. oh, all the under undercurrents oh, I know. It what does. goes on. And so I decided I'm just going to go with what I what I thought suited me, exactly. not with everybody else. Exactly. And the funniest thing, Buck, was they had a vote and we went from a lifestyle roster, roster which with doing, a yeah. pyjama day oh, yeah, right. to just, no, it was four and four, yes. two lifestyle roster, right. no pyjama day. That's what yes. we were voting on. And um, the old fellas really wanted the, hello, <laughs> The old fellas really wanted to stay four and four. That's all they knew. And we've got to work that extra day. Who's going to do it? Like now we do seven and seven. I know. I know. And uh, it got through four and four with the voters. But the company said, but we think the other one is better. So the vote that lost is actually the roster that got in. And How does that work out? Well, they never said... Whoever like whoever wins the vote is what's going to be. Like, ah, you they want to hear your that. opinion. Ah, yeah, it was a little. Yeah. Uh, what do they call it? The yes. Small writing. Yeah. Yes. yeah. <laughs> well, we had that. We had um, when I left Oakey Creek and went to North Kenyala, It was always going to be four and four, hmm. twelve hour shifts. And we were coming from nine and a half hour shifts, I think they were, at at um, Oakey Creek. 
oh, there was hell on. <laughs> yeah, the union was going crook and you will never get 12-hour shifts in this country and rah, rah, rah. I said, for Christ's sake, we were doing like seven, nine and a half hour shifts and most of us were doing overtime, so it was 12, and having two days off. Yeah. Where does that so go when you've got e- equal right. days off? You've got to look at the off yes. more than the on. <laughs> but when, I, when we started, the first two, the first month, it was, it was uh, 23 days on, five off. I'd done one, mm. and I went in and I said, I'm not doing this to my family. No. You know, cause we were living at Serena Beach. They rented a house for me. Yeah. And I said, I'm not, I'm not doing this. Anyway, so they pushed and pushed, and they got four and four. And what happened? They all wanted to come from Oakey Creek to get to four and four because mm. it was that bloody good. Yeah. You know, well, four and four was good. Oh, mate. You just get out there and it's time to go home. That's right. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. And yeah. it, was, it was good, you know. But a lot of people played on that roster yeah. too because they knew the first day was settling in yep. and the last day was the day to go home. Yeah, sports day. So they only day. had two days production. That's right. And yeah. I used to hate sports day because I had a, a really good friend and uh, he's passed away now, but he used to bring a whistle on a Friday for sports day. <laughs> yeah. And I used to say, get that whistle. And I, and I got rid of the whistle. <laughs> and the next tour, the whole crew had a whistle. <gasps> and I was in the Just front. Just to piss you off even And they more. all go, sports day. And they all whistled. Uh, but, oh, we did have some fun. That's good. And it was all taken in jest. Yeah. You know, yeah. we did have some fun. Yeah. And that's what you've got to do. You've got they to were find great days. ways to make. That's Your right. time out there, yes, fun and bearable that's and right. light, and and that's why I wrote that book. Mm. And I mean, there's lots of things that aren't in it mm. that I couldn't course, remember yeah. everything, you know. But I wanted to get I wanted to get just what I could remember out. And you know, you never know. I might write some more notes one day. Yeah, I'm not saying I'll do another book, book but two. I might write some more notes, and we'll see how we go. Yeah. Yeah, well, when I'm, you think of some more, let me know. Come back yeah, on the podcast. I, will. I love good fun I, I, I stories. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Been a bit serious lately. We have lately. some bloody beauties here. Yeah, yeah, no characters. So we might think about wrapping up and then yes. we'll go up and have a look at. That's fine. Look at your lovely stuff up yeah. there. Um, the final question that I usually ask people yes. is, "What is your special place, Buck? When life turns to crap, can get tough." Um, how do you personally handle tough times? What do you do? What's your happy place? Are, like? you, are you talking about at work on, on roster or, or at home? Both, if you like. Um, I find, again, music and I, I, I go for a walk. Um, if I've got problems, I'll talk to my wife or, you know, find someone to talk to. And, um, yeah, I just... Tough times, I... Um, it, it, it is hard sometimes, but you've got to find someone to talk to. Mm. And Annalise, it doesn't matter who he is. I had a good friend and he was a staffy and he was, I could talk to him about anything. And I used to go and talk to him sometimes about personal things, you know. And when things got tough, you know. Um, I had some health issues a few years ago and I thought, you know, I thought the worst. But, uh, yeah, he was fantastic and the company were fantastic. So... You know, you've got to talk to people. If you've got problems, whether it be health or um, medical, you know, you know, it's to find someone that you trust and and someone who's going to give you good ideas. And, you know, everyone's got a friend and you need to find a friend and, and, and have it with them. If you don't want to talk to a family member, find someone out of the loop and someone who you trust, if you've known for a while. And, and, and that's the you know, talking about it is... It's, much better, as we know, but it's easy to say. It is. It was a yeah. personal thing, you know. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I find it, when I do things tough and that, like my family is, is very, you know, I'm very close to them, so I find that pretty good. Mm. Yeah. And um, I can imagine looking at the view here, sitting outside oh, look, with the yeah, Great Northern, this is it, yeah. staring out of sitting the ocean. Out. Do you see whales here? It's, yes. <gasps> Porpoises last week, me and Al were walking the beach, it was porpoises. Uh, dolphins, sorry. Yeah. And whales, we see them <laughs> listing out they here. call them porpoises? Yeah, we do. Oh, yeah, bloody I know. kiwi. I know. <laughs> They're everywhere now. <laughs> I have not seen a dolphin since I've been You're up joking. here. You're joking. No. Yeah. Only um, two days ago. Uh, what day was it? Uh, Monday morning. No, Sunday. Sunday, we seen yeah. them. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. They were just off the beach too, about 50 metres off the beach. Oh, look, we're very lucky where we live. You know, it's yeah. beautiful. Yes. Absolutely. 
Thanks so much for your time. Oh, look, any time. If we can help any other time, that'd be fantastic. And I shall leave a link in the show notes. That'd be good. Hopefully we'll sell thousands of your books. Oh, uh, well, I'll try I and... highly recommend... Oh, and don't forget, you've got to sign up. Uh, yes, I will. Before I, I really, I really want to get into... Um, try and get down to New South Wales because I know those old fellas that, um, understand the book too. So. There's writing already in there. Yeah, enjoy the read. I've done like 300 books one day. So. Oh, wow. That's so good. I don't do it all. That's beautiful personal. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That is good, isn't it? I bet you're very proud of him. Yeah, I am. Yeah. Really good. Yeah. How's the right Julianne, thanks a lot. Enjoy the read. Oh, it's beautiful. Good. Thanks so much. It's we'll fine. go up now and or yes. wherever it is. We'll go and have a look at all these. Uh, mining collection. Mining collection, and I'll do a little video, guys, That's and you can right. see that in the show notes, madmumsy.com forward slash beers63. Great. Cheers. Well, there you go. I hope you enjoyed our chat as much as we did. Be sure to check out the Background Briefing podcast and also the video of Buck telling me all about his mining collection. They can all be found on the show notes page, madmumsy.com forward slash beers 63. I think I've found some new friends in Buck and his wife and he has invited me to connect with him anytime. Mad Mumsy needs to talk about an issue and so I've got a feeling he will be back on the podcast. So you can look forward to that the show notes page for this episode, which by now I'm sure you'll never forget, madmumsy.com forward slash beers 63. And that's M-U-M-Z-I-E. Thanks to Julia and the team at Bantax Accounting Group for supporting the podcast. And most of all to you for listening. And please share with your mates. Until next time, stay safe, be real, be special and have fun for we only live once. Cheers. I don't need to do to ask too many things. <laughs> but at the end of the day... But that's I, how you learn. That's how I learn. Yeah. I'm going to yeah. let you guys do your thing. La, la, la. Yes. So I'm just, I'm just going to pick up in maybe the first minute and then I'll, I'll leave. You yep. Know. Okay, but cool. I, I might get a photo of you doing your thing. Oh, that'd be great. If, okay. Can you get one of my phones? Oh, <laughs> Please. <laughs> 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 oh, it's all about social media oh, and stuff these days. Thank you.